Maybe I'll have to leave the country. I don't know. The soon to be out on bail and former president Donald Trump is once again openly discussing the idea that he could just fly away somewhere else to escape all of this. So in this video, I will show you the latest example of Trump discussing how he may be a flight risk. I'll also get to just how realistic that is and maybe a couple locations where he could flee to. And starting here, I'll get to what is happening this week in Georgia to kick all of this off as his co-defendants are beginning to surrender. So this is the news from uh, Hugo Lowell here saying Fulton County DA has advised several of Trump's co-defendants that they should surrender at the jail around 3 a.m. Eastern if they want a quick turnaround on their booking because it could take hours during the day. So uh, we are already seeing the first example, first couple examples of this. So the first co-defendant to turn himself in was Scott Hall. Hall is a former bail bondsman, and he was involved in the infamous breach in Coffee County, in uh, which Hall successfully gained access to a voting machine on the orders of fellow co-defendant and former Trump attorney Sidney Powell. So he's the first one to uh, surrender to authorities. You also have John Eastman here, conservative lawyer. He was also... Uh, saying he will fight the charges and has turned himself in. He's agreed to a $100,000 bond. And he was, of course, he championed the legal theory that Trump used to pressure Pence to overturn the election results. So he's deep in this as well. I have to think, though, there are 16 others. Is anyone going to flip? Because at this point, if you if you have the opportunity to, why would you stick with Trump and not just flip. Now, that doesn't mean that they're looking for anyone to flip. That doesn't mean they're going to offer these people anything if they if they choose to do so. But if they have that opportunity, why would you stick by Trump still when he you know he doesn't care about you? He doesn't care about anybody but himself. So the, that is still maybe a possibility here, even though they would not, the prosecution, I don't think, would need anyone to flip. They have everything they need at this point for Trump. But uh, as uh, Insider writes here, legal experts told Insider that the large group of named co-defendants, as well as 30 unnamed co-conspirators referenced in the indictment, may prove to be an advantage to the prosecution because some of them could feel compelled to flip on Trump and cooperate with the prosecution in exchange for shorter sentences or other favorable outcomes. So legal experts are saying it may happen, but at the same time, I'm wondering why would they need anyone to flip on him? They have what they need. So just throw them all in jail. Like, I don't give a shit <laughs> at this point. At this point, they're all guilty. And yeah, so, you know, we'll see where that goes. But here is Trump's first reaction to all of this on uh, Truth Social, discussing that he will be turning himself in. Can you believe it? I'll be going to Atlanta, Georgia on Thursday to be arrested by a radical left district attorney, Fannie Willis, who is overseeing one of the greatest murder and violent crime disasters in American history. In my case, the trip to Atlanta is not for murder, <laughs> but for making a perfect phone call. Yes, the perfect phone call where you told, where you pressured Georgia state officials to find you votes to win the state. Yes, the perfect phone call. She uh, campaigned and is continuing to campaign and raise money on this witch hunt. This is in strict coordination with crooked Joe Biden's DOJ. It is all about election interference. Yes, it is all about your election interference. <laughs> like, the, this man, I mean, essentially, he's, he's saying this once again. I did everything right and they indicted me. He did everything right and they indicted him. How dare they? Now, as the AP writes here, the president is barred from intimidating co-defendants, witnesses, or victims in the case, including on social media, according to the bond agreement that he signed. It explicitly includes posts on social media or reposts of posts made by others, which we have already seen him do, as I covered last week when he pressured on social media the former lieutenant governor of Georgia, Jeff Duncan, about his, uh, his uh, testifying and that he shouldn't. So this is why that's in there. This is where we get to the flight risk, potential flight risk. That is Donald Trump. He followed up that last truth social with this, saying the failed district attorney of Fulton County, Atlanta, Fannie Willis, insisted on a $200,000 bond from me. I assume, therefore, that she thought I was a flight risk. 
I'd fly far away, maybe to Russia, 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 share a gold-domed suite with Vladimir, never to be seen or heard from again. Would I be able to take my very understated airplane with the gold Trump affixed for all to see? Probably not. I'd be much better off flying commercial. I'm sure nobody would recognize me. Uh, okay, so he's uh, it appears he's poking fun at the idea that he would escape. But he has discussed this before. So I'll get to a couple examples. And look, I'm not... I'll get to my thoughts on this. Because I, I don't think he's going to do this. Though I do go back and forth. Because, I mean, I don't know. If I were in his shoes, it's hard to picture that. But if I was, and you have the possi- you have properties all over the world. You have friends in other countries. If it's clear to me as Donald Trump that I am... Going to face some repercussions here. I don't know. You're that wealthy. You're that well-connected. You can probably find a way to escape. I'm not saying he should. I don't think he should. I want to see him behind bars. <laughs> but if he is aware of what he is up against, it, it's it would be surprising to me if he didn't consider it, is what I'm saying. That said, before I get to some of that, I want to show you just... The stuff we see on Truth Social here. This is what he is retruthing on Truth Social. This person who knows if they're real or not, again, it's it's impossible to know. But this is, <laughs> this is what they posted. His only crime, loving his country too much. Yes, I will vote for him no matter what. This is an ongoing meme that is going on, or I don't know, meme or campaign slogan that is going on on Truth Social. But uh, the I will vote for him no matter what. Here's another example of that. Someone else posted this that he retruthed. They indicted the wrong president with a quote saying, accusing the other side of that which you are guilty. What? <laughs> Look, I'm sure we could discuss things that Biden may be guilty of. Uh, I would consider him being guilty of not really fulfilling his campaign promises and not putting enough pressure on people like Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema. But that's a different discussion. He didn't try to steal an election. He didn't try to have a fake slate of electors and have this whole plan to pressure different states to flip on on who they decided to that that won that state. Like that, there were no calls of Biden calling into other states or or I don't know Hillary for that matter back in 2016, calling other states and saying, "Hey, can you find me 11,000 votes?" That's not that didn't happen. Trump did that. Can you first of all? Can you imagine? Can you imagine? If Hillary Clinton did that, if there was a phone call of Hillary Clinton calling, I don't know, Pennsylvania and saying, hey, hey, come on now, <laughs> you could find me, you could find me a few thousand votes, can't, can't you? Like, imagine if that phone call existed. Trump would come out and be like, oh, completely innocent. She did nothing wrong. It was the perfect phone call. <laughs> come on. So it's all just so, this is all so ridiculous. But to uh, get back to the flight risk. Mehdi Hassan also floated this idea last week. Let me play you uh, his clip. And he's afraid of the law. And listening to John speak there about, you know, him being booked and what might go through his mind, I genuinely think we need to start having a discussion about whether this guy is a flight risk. And I don't say that lightly. I would never have said that even six months I ago. I don't either. But the closer we get to trials, the closer we get to trials, the more serious it becomes. Looking at how hardcore yep. these indictments are from Smith and Willis, looking at the risk Trump is in. I don't know if you saw him joking, quote unquote, joking with his followers the other day. I wish I was in France right now not in America. Uh, you know, nothing is off the table with this guy. So I genuinely think we've got to talk about what, you know, what is his exit strategy apart from plea? Does he have anything else he might want to do? So Mehdi Hassan for me is one of the more trustworthy uh, pundits in, in political media. There are very few of them, I think, in mainstream press, whether it's MSNBC, CNN. But Mehdi Hassan has been consistent. He does fight for the right things generally, and I do trust his his viewpoint. That said, I think he's guilty of what a lot of us are guilty of, and that is being in our own heads. Because we're thinking, well, if we have that much power, we're clearly guilty. We know we're guilty as criminals. Again, being in the mind of Trump, you have that much power, that much wealth. Why wouldn't you just escape if you can? Trump, I don't honestly think... At this point, I don't think Trump is has really come to terms with the fact that he may face repercussions. 
Think of his entire life. He's gotten away with everything for decades and decades and decades. His lawlessness. He's gotten, whether it's uh, cheating on his taxes, whether it is discriminating, uh, uh, the discrimination he was charged of uh, along with his father when it came to, to housing. There's a variety of things he has done over the years that he has faced no repercussions for. So why would he think at this, this is the time where he's finally going to face repercussions? Why would somebody who thinks that they may be found guilty of something, why would they take documents and not from the White House and not give them back when asked? That's all, all he had to do in that indictment, if that, before that indictment happened, is give those documents back. He was asked again and again and again and again, and he, re and he refused. And then he got indicted. Why would he have done that? Why would he have kept these documents if he thought he would get indicted? If he thought there were going to be some repercussions? So I don't think Trump is in the mindset of someone who was guilty. I'm sure he knows he's a criminal in the sense that he did these things he's accused of, but I don't think he thinks that there's going to be any repercussions for what he did. So it's possible he doesn't get to that point until he hears guilty in the courtroom because I don't I don't know what else it's going to take. Which is which goes to why I don't think he's a flight risk because I don't think that he thinks he's going to face anything. But that was a clip from uh, August 8th. Let me get to one from, uh, or sorry, the, the clip that Mehdi Hassan mentioned is from August 8th. Let me show you that clip now, and then I'll get to one from 2020 as well. They know it's a phony story. They say he's going to go to jail. These are not, these are not Mrs. Lewandowski. You hear that? Can you imagine if that with these kids? Can you imagine what, look what your husband got me into. I could have been relaxing at Mar-a-Lago or in the south of France, which I would prefer being in this country, frankly. So uh, that's Trump, August 8th, saying that he'd prefer to be in the south of France than in the USA. A very un-American thing to say. But <laughs> he, these sorts of speeches, all these speeches for him, they're therapy. He goes there to just unload, say whatever's on his mind. This is, this is what he loves, which is also part of the reason why I don't think he would fly away. Why I don't think he's a flight risk. He loves this attention. He loves the media attention. He loves the crowds. For him to what? What's he going to do if he goes and hides in, you know, Saudi Arabia? What's he going to do? He'll be bored. Like, he he loves the attention. And that, that in conjunction with him not believing he's going to face anything, I think goes to why he's not really a flight risk. Though, again, I go back and forth on this because we don't know what's in Trump's actual mind. He may be actually worried at this point because he should be. Let me get to another example now. This is from 2020. This is before the election against Biden that he, of course, lost. Here's what he was saying back then. Running against the worst candidate in the history of presidential politics puts pressure on me. Could you imagine if I lose my whole life? What am I going to do? I'm going to say I lost to the worst candidate in the history of politics. I'm not going to feel so good. Maybe I'll have to leave the country. I don't know. All right. So that clip is at least appears to be more in reference to that he would be so embarrassed about losing to Biden that he would just flee the country. Well, he chose a different route, which is just deny that he lost. In hindsight, maybe he should have left then. Would all of these charges be coming down if he just wasn't in the country? I mean, I, I would hope because he's still guilty of all these things. But if he wasn't in the country, then he likely wouldn't be showing up for any of it. But now that he's in the country and this is all going down, it's kind of hard for him to escape in the middle of it. But before I get to uh, my final thoughts on this, let's just let's just imagine. Where could he go? All right. So I mentioned Saudi Arabia earlier because he I mean, for obvious reasons, there, his ongoing connections, business dealings with uh, the Saudis. So there's a sound of. Uh, this is back in 2018. Saudi-funded lobbyist paid for 500 rooms at Trump's hotel after 2016 election. I mean, the, and I covered that back then as well. The, this this corruption has been uh, well documented throughout his presidency. You also have uh, last year's live season. Live is a, is a golf uh, company. Um, 
owned by the Saudis. Uh, so the live season culminated in an event hosted by hosted at Trump's course in Miami. And uh, this season, Trump Properties will host three Live events. In other words, five of Live's 22 events in the 2022 and 2023 will be held at venues in the in Trump's business portfolio. You also have Kushner's connections. So his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, the uh, Saudis invested $2 billion in Jared Kushner's business after the uh, election. So... There's all these various business ties. He also has other business ties to properties in uh, in in Saudi Arabia. So again, in this fairy tale, tale land where he does escape somewhere, Saudi Arabia possibility. Another one. This was uh, floated by McLean's. This is back in 2020 after they were thinking about maybe he'd leave if he lost to Joe Biden. They they right here. If the president uh, becomes an international fugitive, he will seek sanctuary in Dubai. So they're, they're, they go through a variety of different places you could fly to. And uh, for them, the UAE earns a perfect score. But they also bring up uh, Saudi Arabia as well, Russia, of course. I, Trump's not, Trump is not going to go to Russia. Like, why would he go there? He, he wants to be somewhere, I don't know, in the sun and drinking champagne. I feel like Russia's a little too, little too combative <laughs> for him to, uh, to really enjoy. That said, I don't think he's going anywhere. So uh, Newsweek writes here, while Trump could attempt to escape his legal troubles by living in exile, the likelihood of the former president escaping undetected is very low due to both his global fame and the fact that he travels with a Secret Service security detail at all times. So he'd have to shred that Secret Service detail. I think he would feel a little exposed at that point. And of course, you know, escaping undetected, also tough for uh, Donald Trump, unless he flies in his golden jet plane. But I don't know. So uh, there is one thing he is escaping, though, and that is the debates. So the debate on Wednesday, which if I can cover it live on YouTube, I will. There's always questions around copyright. Sometimes they care, sometimes they don't. It is fair use. It's commentary while showing a debate. I'm not just recasting it. But... I'll see if I can cover it. Um, if I can't on YouTube, then maybe on Twitch, but I'll post about it on the community tab, which you'll be notified of if you subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to get all notifications. You'll be notified if I post on the community tab about where I may be streaming this. But the debate is going to be DeSantis, of course, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy, Mike Pence, Nikki Haley, Tim Scott, Chris Christie, Doug Burgum, and Asa Hutchinson. I'll get to my predictions uh, when we get to the debate. I don't know. I don't I don't know. I think for my personal enjoyment, Chris Christie will will likely perform the best because he'll be attacking Trump. The others I, I don't I don't care for I, I don't care for any of them, including Chris Christie. Chris Christie's also a terrible person, but he's just the one that is more willing to actually attack Trump on a consistent basis. So I'm all down for that. There you go. Debate coming up. Trump flying away, maybe. No, I don't think so. But give me your thoughts. Is Trump a flight risk? What do you think?